Welcome, and thank you for standing by. Your lines have been placed on a listen-only mode until the question and answer session. At that time, if you would like to ask a question, you may press star 1. Today's conference is being recorded. If you have any objections, you may disconnect at this time. Now I will turn the call over to Erlene Dowell. You may begin. Thank you, Shanita, and thank you to Lisa Glover for, from the U.S. Census Bureau for hosting our webinar today. On behalf of the U.S. Census Bureau and a partnership with the Council for Community and Economic Research and the Labor Market Information Institute, welcome to our June LED webinar. Before we begin, just a few house cleaning items. Participants will receive an evaluation survey when they log off from the webinar. For those of you who are unable to complete the survey today, you will receive a follow-up email in a few days with a survey link. With that, it is with great pleasure that I introduce not only my colleague, but also my friend, Andrew Haight, as he presents Accessing the Quarterly Workforce Indicators in the Census Business Builder. To address frequent requests from our data users for more timely and detailed workforce information, the basic data from the quarterly workforce indicators at the state and county levels were added to both the Small Business and Regional Analyst Editions of Census Business Builder in version 2.4, released in July 2018. Andy Haight is an economist and serves as the data product and data user liaison in the International Trade Management Division at the U.S. Census Bureau. With over 29 years of service at the Bureau, Andy advises on economic data products and conducts data user training for the Economic Census and the Census Business Census Bureau's other monthly quarterly and annual economic survey programs. He also coordinates the development of innovative new data tools, including the new Census Business Builder Suite that presents selected demographic and economic data in a user-friendly map-based interface. Andy is also the lead ge geographic specialist in the Economic Programs Directorate at the Census Bureau. Andy holds a bachelor's degree in economics from Syracuse University at, and has a master's certificate in project management from George Washington University. With that, I hand it over to Andy. Thank you so much, Arlene, for the really uh, wonderful introduction. And thank you to all of you who have uh, joined us today for this webinar. So as Arlene said, I am the project manager for a data tool called Census Business Builder. And I want to quickly kind of walk through a high-level overview of Census Business Builder, and then we'll dive right in and actually talk about the quarterly workforce indicators data that's in there. So back in 2014, a colleague of mine was working on a hackathon here at the Census Bureau, and he approached me to see if I had any ideas for a particular data tool that they might create as part of this hackathon event. I was particularly concerned, and have been for quite some time, about the small business failure rate in the United States. Every year, more than 100,000 new businesses start up, but every year, nearly 100,000 businesses close or fail. And a big part of why that happens is because these entrepreneurs often don't do the homework that they need to do to do the basic research to determine if opening their type of business in their area at that time is a good idea. So as a result of this hackathon event, the very first prototype of what today is called Census Business Builder was, was cr created. We've been updating this application every three to six months ever since 2015, um, and today I'm going to be walking through what's currently available in version 2.5 which was released in December of last year, and then I'll give you all a preview of what's coming in version 2.6 and even a little bit more information about what's coming in the future. So there are two editions of Census Business Builder that Erlene mentioned. At the top of your screen, you can see what is the small business edition, and this is the edition that I'm going to focus on t today. Small Business Edition, as its name implies, was designed specifically for entrepreneurs and small business owners, and it allows them to go in and select their type of business and their location that they're interested in and do research about the demographics, about the businesses, about the other characteristics of that particular geographic area. At the, at the end of their research, they can then create a report 
about a year after we released the first edition, the Small Business Edition, we had some requests from a Chamber of Commerce Executives organization about creating a second edition, which is the Regional Analyst Edition in your bottom left-hand corner. The main difference between the Regional Analyst Edition and the Small Business Edition is that the Regional Analyst Edition allows the user to look at all types of businesses in an area, not just one at a time, the way the Small Business Edition does. And two, and more, maybe more importantly, the Regional Analyst Edition lets the user build their own region. Because this tool was designed primarily for Chambers of Commerce and other regional planning authorities, giving them the ability to create a region made up of two or more Census Bureau geographic areas is a key functionality of this tool. I'm not going to actually get a chance to demo the Regional Analyst Edition today, but the functionality you're going to see in the Small Business Edition is pretty much identical to what's available in the Regional Analyst, and that includes the quarterly workforce indicators data. When we, believe, when we released these tools, we followed some basic guiding principles. Number one, we wanted these tools to be easy to use, and hopefully when I walk through the demo, you will see that we've pretty much tried to follow that basic guiding principle. Second, we've wanted these tools to be customer focused. That is, we wanted to listen very closely to our data users as they asked for certain types of inform information in Census Business Builder. The region, reason why the quarterly workforce indicators data are available in the Small Business Edition and the Regional Analyst Edition is because of that customer focus. Because data users said, I really like your tool, I like the employment data you have in Census Business Builder, but it's a bit old. Do you have anything more current? And when we then told them about the quarterly workforce indicators data, they asked for us to add it. This tool not only provides access to Census Bureau data, but also provides access to other data. And you'll actually learn a little bit more about that when we talk about what's coming in version 2.6, which is scheduled for release on August 19th of this year. The tool even includes some third-party consumer spending data that we purchased from Esri, which, who is the developer of this tool, um, and we've put that data in there for free. CBB leverages the investments that we've made not only with Esri, but also with our data API, our application programming interface. All of the data that is available in Census Business Builder comes into the tool via APIs. And the, the data that's in here, as we kind of expand more and more data in our API, we are expanding the information that we can make available in Census Business Builder. This tool was also the first Census Bureau cloud-deployed, publicly-facing application, and we put it on the cloud really for one main reason, and that is speed. The, act, the ability for the user to see data on a map in a, in a very quick sort of fashion is something that we knew people would want. And of course, this tool is available for free. I provided the link. Uh, to Census Business Builder, the homepage here on this slide, and I've also provided a link to some webinars that we've created specifically for, for, for Census Business Builder about the basic features as well as some of the power user features. So let's talk a little bit about what was added in version 2.5, the December release and before then. From a functionality perspective, we added the ability to add your own reference layers and to change the base map. Some of our users commented that they didn't like the color palette that we had chosen for the map. Uh, it was recommended to us by Esri, so we went ahead and added the ability to change the base map and change the reference layers and, of course, the color palette and even the classing scheme. In the Regional Analyst Edition, we also added the ability to build your regions via multiple methods. So, for example, originally you could only build your regions in the Regional Analyst Edition on states and on counties. Now you can build it on all five levels of geography that are, that are supported by the Regional Analyst Edition. That is state, county, city, zip code, and even census tract. Because we knew that the boundaries of some chambers of commerce 
follow not only city boundaries, but often county boundaries. In the December release, we also added the ability to build your region of two or more different types of geographies. So let's say you were interested in looking at the data for three counties and five neighboring cities. The application now allows you to build your region based upon that. From a data perspective, we added some additional data in the last uh, release or two, which includes the residential building permits data uh, that is circled on the right-hand side of your slide. Um, these are information about new residential building permits um, issued. The data are available by permit issuing area level. So in Census Business Builder, you can view data at the state, county, and even city level. We also added a feature called My Variables, which allows you to upload your own data. This has been a really popular feature in Census Business Builder because it allows users, small business owners and other types of users, to upload their own particular information. So for example, we had an entrepreneur, a restaurateur in the city of Philadelphia, who had a spreadsheet that had information about all of her customers. She had tabulated the data for every single zip code that her customers come from based upon their credit card receipts. And she had tabulated information not only on the number of restaurant visits that she's had from those folks, but also the amount of money that they had spent and whether or not they had used a coupon. She wanted to compare her customer database to the general population that's available in those zip codes around the city of Philadelphia to see how good penetration she had with her marketing uh, that she was doing. And in doing that, she discovered that there were a number of zip codes where she had a large number of customers, but they weren't using their zip code, they weren't using their coupons. And likewise, she also had some zip codes that seemed to have a great possibility of customers, but she didn't have any customers coming from there. So it affected, it allowed her to customize her, her marketing plan. Of course, you can see the last uh, bullet on this slide is the reason why you all are participating today, and that is because of customer feedback, we added the workforce data that, census biz that, um, that are available from the quarterly workforce indicators to Census Business Builder. So for today's webinar, I'm going to uh, follow a scenario for the trucking industry. As many of you all know, uh, we are currently uh, seeing a shortage of truck drivers in the United States. Um, the trucking industry is critically important to the U.S. economy, and this data tool does give users the ability to research the trucking industry. On the right-hand side of your slide um, is an America Count story that I actually wrote with a colleague of mine, Jennifer Day, that talks about the trucking industry in the United States. It provides information on truck drivers and truckers as an occupation, uh, some really interesting statistics on how the demographics of the typical truck driver are changing. This is no longer just simply a old, white, uneducated male uh, occupation. Uh, it's now increasingly more minorities, more women, more highly educated folks, and certainly higher income levels. And I've provided a link to that America Count story here on the slide. So with that, I'm going to jump out of my PowerPoint file and go over to my live web browser and actually do a quick demo of Census Business Builder so you all can see how this application works and how you can access the quarterly workforce indicators data. So to get to Census Business Builder, I go to Explore Data, Data Tools and Apps, and then from the long list of our different data tools, I choose Census Business Builder. We're being a little bit slow here today. Okay, let's see what's going on here. Just being slow. Okay, I apologize for the delay here. I'm not quite sure why it's being so slow. Let's see here. Let me just try to refresh the screen here. Okay, so there's my different list of data tools. I'm going to scroll down through this list, and I'm going to choose Census Business Builder. And that will now bring us to the Census Business Builder homepage. 
On this home page, we have a number of features. Of course, we have the links to the two editions of Census Business Builder, the Small Business Edition here on the left, the Regional Analyst Edition here on the right. Above those two links, we have some flyers, overview flyers, as well as instructional flyers. And here is the links to those webinars that we've recorded for Census Business Builder. Of course, we have the normal help in FAQs. I will let you all, you all know right now that Census Business Builder is mobile optimized. It is designed to work on your mobile device. You can learn more about that in the FAQs. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on the Small Business Edition link. When the application first loads, it comes to what we call the splash page. The splash page allows me to do two selections. First, I can choose the type of business that I want to research. We have the 54 most popular, most commonly open small businesses in the United States available under these six broad categories. So if I was interested in opening a restaurant or researching restaurants in a particular area, I could choose food service and then restaurants. If I was interested in opening a home health care business, I can click on health care and then choose home health care from the list. For the purposes of today's demo, we're interested in researching the trucking industry. So I'm going to go to the professional and business services uh, button and I'm going to go ahead and click on trucking. Now, one point I want to make about the data that is available in Census Business Builder. As you all well know, the quarterly workforce indicators data are available at the two through four digit NAICS code levels. The data are not available at the five and six. So if I had chosen a particular four or five or six digit NAICS code, like lawyers is a five digit NAICS code, we wouldn't be able to get quarterly workforce indicators data available for that five digit code, but we could get it for NAICS code 5411, the broader category. In our case today, the trucking industry button I have here is already at the four-digit NAICS code level 4841. But if it wasn't, I could actually use the search box here at the bottom of Census Business Builder and search for either based upon a title or based upon the NAICS code, the industry that I'm interested in. So I'm going to click on the trucking link here. And we can right away see that there's a little over 69,000 employer trucking businesses in the United States. I'm interested in researching the trucking industry in Anne Arundel County, Maryland, and some of its surrounding counties. So I go to my search box, I type in Anne, and it brings me up a list of geographies beginning or containing the word Anne. Turns out there's only one Anne uh, county in the U.S. So when I choose that area, two buttons then turn on. The first button allows me to go to the map and actually browse the data that's available for the trucking industry in Anne Arundel County. The second button allows me to go in and create a report uh, based upon uh, that data. Now, in addition to the search box, I could have also used this My Location button. This zooms the application to where my computer is sitting or where my, where my phone is, is physically located based upon its GPS coordinates. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the map uh, to actually start looking at some of the data that's available. Right away, we can see uh, some statistics on the total population in Anne Arundel County, which is about 564,000 people, as well as some of the neighboring areas. Clicking on the map allows me to go ahead and look at the, the population in Prince George's County, in Howard County, et cetera. Um, as I pan this map, the map is now going to repaint um, based upon the new geographies. And the repainting of the map is done immediately based upon an API call from, um, from our Census Bureau API. So for those of you who are, who are considering consuming data via our API, you can see how reasonably fast it's performing. Some of you might have noticed the error fetching data message that keeps popping up in the upper right hand corner. I'm one of the least patient people I think that I know. Um, we set up this application to respond, uh, to have the API respond in one millisecond or less for every API call. And when the, when the API was responding in longer than, in more than one millisecond, we get that error message. So 
So we have been seeing a little bit of performance uh, challenges with our API, but I think one millisecond is probably still a little, uh, little interesting. So if we were interested in researching the trucking industry in Anne Arundel County, Maryland, I would of course not only be interested in some of the demographic data, things like the total population, the age, the race, the ethnicity of people that live in that particular area. I might be interested in some socioeconomic characteristics of the population that live in that area, things like the household income or the educational attainment. Um, disability status, employment status, these are all of our socioeconomic data variables that are available in Census Business Builder. And I might even be interested in some of the housing statistics that are available, things like the number of owner versus renter occupied housing units, house values, owner costs, things like that. Probably I'm more interested though in other trucking businesses. So by clicking on the Businesses tab, I can go in and look at how many trucking businesses are there in Anne Arundel County by clicking on Employer Establishments. And I can immediately then see, once the map repaints, that there are 78 uh, employer um, trucking businesses in Anne Arundel County. In Prince George's County, there's 100 uh, employer trucking businesses. So I'm already being able to see some business data about this industry. We also have data on employment, annual payroll, and revenue of those trucking businesses. So for example, if I wanted to find out how many employees are there in, in those trucking businesses in Anne Arundel County, I can click on the number of employees, the map is now going to repaint, and now I can see that there's 1,415 employees. In addition to the employer data, we also provide information on self-employed truck drivers, truckers, uh, so the in independent or what we call non-employer trucking firms. So this is going to give me information on how many non-employer trucking firms are there in Anne Arundel County. And right away, I can see that there's 407. That ratio of almost 10 to 1 is pretty common for the trucking industry where you have a lot of independent truck drivers that are not part, that do not work for a larger trucking firm, they are an independent driver. So in addition to the non-employer data on revenue, we also include some things like some ratios, average payroll per employee, average revenue per, per employee. These were statistics that we added after some of the first releases of Census Business Builder because people said, you know, I'm interested in researching a trucking industry, the trucking industry, and I want to find out whether I'm going to have to pay my employees more or less in Anne Arundel County versus in Prince George's County, what is the average? So we can see by clicking on average payroll per employee, the average payroll is $50,988, whereas here in the city of Baltimore, um, it's 52978 so you can see it's a little more expensive, if you will, to pay truck drivers, uh, uh, average trucking driver em employees in the city of Baltimore than it is in Anne Arundel County. Now, as great as all of this business data was, um, users still commented that it wasn't as detailed as they really wanted. They not only wanted data on employment, but they also wanted to separate out that employment into hires and separations, firm job gain, firm job loss, things like that. They not only wanted information on annual payroll, but they wanted information on quarterly or on monthly payrolls. And we said, okay, our other business surveys at the Census Bureau don't provide that additional level of detail, but the quarterly workforce indicators data does. So last year, we added this new third tab to the menu, uh, map variables menu, which is the data for the quarterly workforce indicators. We've included the basic data, as Erlene mentioned, including the beginning of, of quarter employment, hires, separations, firm job gain, firm job loss, job change, and average monthly earnings. Having these data in Census Business Builder really helps to expand the value of the data that's available in the tool. Now on the dashboard, you can see we've not only provided data on average monthly earnings for the latest quarter, which in this case right now is fourth quarter 2016, 
uh, but we've also included three prior quarters. So we can see how is the average monthly earnings of trucking firms um, in Anne Arundel County, Maryland, how is that changing over time? And you can see it's actually been going up over those last four quarters of 2016. The dashboard also allows the user to compare how does the average monthly earnings for Anne Arundel County compare to the state of Maryland. And we can see it's actually a little bit lower than the state average. So we've added this great uh, quarterly workforce indicators data. Um, it can be used in conjunction with the other data we have in here. So for example, we have our building permits data that we've added. We have that consumer spending information that we purchased from Esri. How much do people spend on different categories? And we have, finally, this My Variables menu where I can upload my own data. Now I want to give you a quick scenario of a particular user that I actually talked to that was interested in merging together the business and demographic data that we have in this tool with the quarterly workforce indicators data. So in this particular case, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to look at all hires from the quarterly workforce indicators data. And I can see that in fourth quarter 2016, there were 241 people that were hired during that fourth quarter uh, to work for these trucking firms. I now want to look at this map and I want to filter it based upon some of the other characteristics that are available in this tool. The ability to merge together the data across multiple programs is a core functionality of Census Business Builder. So the way I would do that is by using the filter. So if I go over here and I want to add a new filter, I can now go in and I can filter the map to only show certain characteristics. So let's say I wanted to compare the hires in a particular um, area to the other demographic characteristics. So I want to compare all the counties in Maryland that had at least 100 people that were hired by trucking firms to the demographic characteristics of the people that live in those areas to see how well aligned the educational attainment, the household income, et cetera, are with the hires of this particular firm. So I can go here and select all hires, and I can now go ahead and filter the data on the map based upon that criteria. We can see that for all the counties on the map, the range is between 0 and 241. So I want to adjust that bottom end to 100. I can use the slider bar to adjust it, but I can also enter the values manually. So if I want to go over here and change this to 100, I want to leave it at two, uh, 241 as my maximum. When I now apply that filter, only those geographic areas that had at least 100 hires in the trucking industry are now highlighted. Now let's say I want to go in and I want to look at the educational attainment of, this, of those particular areas. I want to say of all of those areas that are now highlighted, how many of them have a high percentage of people who have a bachelor's degree or higher? So let's say I'm going to go ahead and click on socioeconomic characteristics, percent bachelor's degree or higher, and just like before, I'm going to be allowed to go in and actually um, filter the data based upon this. So this time, let's use a slider bar. I'm going to say where are all the percentage, a higher percentage of people that have a bachelor's degree. I'm going to adjust that slider bar, apply the filter. And now that map is going to repaint to show even fewer geographies that, that now qualify. The tool is designed to filter on up to six dimensions at a time. So it does allow you to then merge that data across all those various different programs to find that particular information. Now once I'm done doing all of this research, I can then create a report. Before I create the report, I just want to very quickly mention to you all that Census Business Builder does support data at the state, county, city, zip code, and even census tract levels, but the data for the quarterly workforce indicators are not available at the city, zip code, and tract levels. So if we were to go ahead and now change the map over to city, town, or zip code, the map would now all gray out because we're still looking at hires. 
we've tried to build this application in such a way that users don't have to know that much about our data. So if we were to try to make that selection, those variables would be crossed out, but the users would then receive a message, hey, the data you're looking for are not available for that level of geography. Why don't you change it to a different level? Of course, we could download the data that's available here on the map with the download button. Here's that reference layers button that I mentioned that we had added. Here's the base maps where I can change my base map. And here's a map transparency slider. And here in the bottom right-hand corner, this is where I can go in and actually change the map color palette and the classing scheme. When I click on the Create Report button in Census Business Builder, the application is now going to gather all of that data that we were just looking at for trucking firms in Anne Arundel County, Maryland, and it's going to assemble all of that demographic and business data, including the quarterly workforce indicators data, into this report. So we start off with a cover sheet here at the start. Here's our demographic data. These charts are all fully interactive, so if I want to now uh, read, read, um, build those charts, I can click on a variable and see that. Here's my socioeconomic data, my housing data, some of our business data from our, some of our business surveys, business revenue. Here's my non-employer business data. Here's the trade data, and because we chose trucking, there isn't any trade information. I can actually hide this entire section by going to Configure Contents, turning off the trade data here, and then saving that. And now that trade particular uh, table will then disappear. So if I now scroll down, I will now see that that trade section is now gone. Um, and then finally, here is that quarterly workforce indicators data that we were just looking at. So we've included the QWI data in the report along with the other Census Bureau uh, data as well. Here's my building permits data. Here's some of that consumer spending information. And finally, a, a, a trailing sheet that has a key for all the flags. Now, one thing I didn't mention uh, before on the map is that Census Business Builder includes the ability to bookmark. Um, so here, if I created this report and I now want to save this report and come back to it later, or maybe I want to share it with a colleague, I can go ahead and click on that particular report, and it will actually then um, bring me right back to this report. And the same is also true with the map. So if I save that URL, the application will bring me right back to the map looking exactly the way it is right now, including all of the filters. So essentially, that is a, is a simple summary of all of the information that is available from the quarterly workforce indicators currently in Census Business Builder. I'm going to go back over to my PowerPoint file to just kind of close this out and then take some questions. So first, what's coming in version 2.6? Uh, I mentioned before this is scheduled for release in August of 2019, specifically August 19th. First, based upon customer feedback, we are going to be adding some additional data. Um, FEMA has been using Census Business Builder quite a bit, and in our conversations with them and with the Bureau of Labor Statistics, they had, were very interested in us adding the quarterly Census of Employment and Wages data, the QCW data, to Census Business Builder. Adding that data is going to do a couple of things. First, it's going to provide some more recent data than what Census has. It's going to include some additional wages data, um, hourly wages data that we don't have available at the Census Bureau. And because the quarterly Census of Employment and Wages includes monthly breakouts, these data are going to be really valuable to highlight highly seasonable, uh, seasonal industries. Um, from a QWI perspective, we are adding some additional functionality. Currently, in Census Business Builder, you can view data essentially on two dimensions, industry and geography. But we've also had a lot of customers, uh, people who have asked, Andy, I know Census Bureau publishes data by business size or by other characteristics. Can you add that third dimension to Census Business Builder that would allow me to now browse some of that data broken out by the size of the business? So we are actually going to be doing that in this August release. From our County Business Patterns program, we're going to be publishing data by employment size. So you will be able to go in and look at not only the number of trucking firms 
employer trucking firms in Anne Arundel County, Maryland. But you will then be able to look at that broken out by the employment size. So how many of those employer trucking firms have between one and four employees, five to nine employees, 10 to 19 employees, et cetera? That employment size third dimension is now going to be incorporated into Census Business Builder. From our non-employer statistics program, we're adding data by revenue size. Because these businesses don't have employees, we can't publish data on employment size, but instead we do have data on revenue size. So if you want to look at trucking firms that had less than $100,000 or less than a million dollars or more than $5 million in annual, pay, in annual revenue, you could look at the data by employment size, or excuse me, by revenue size. And finally, for the purposes of our webinar today, we are going to be adding the third dimension of worker age from the quarterly workforce indicators. So you will not only be able to look at that employment data that we had in QWI currently in Census Business Builder, but you will also be able to go in and select it based upon the age ranges that are displayed here on the right-hand side. This is a screenshot right out of the QWI Explorer tool, um, and you'll be able to select on, on the ranges. For the Regional Analyst Edition, we're adding some additional methods to, to build your region. Currently in the Regional Analyst Edition, you actually have to click one at a time on each of the geographies that you're interested in adding to your region. That's fine when you're building a region of two or three or four counties or three or four or five cities, a small number. But if you were trying to build a region of a much larger number of geographies, say every coastal county in Florida that might have been impacted by a hurricane, that could be a real pain, clicking on them one at a time. So in the August release, we are going to be adding two additional functions uh, to, to build your region, a pin drop and a radius, where you can drop a pin and draw a circle around that pin. You determine what the radius is going to be, and the application will automatically grab all of the geographies that are fully or partially within that circle. And finally, we will also add a freehand select tool where you will be able to hold down your left mouse button, drag it across the areas that you're interested in, and then once you let go of the mouse, it would then select those areas that you've selected. In the Regional Analyst Edition, when you build your region, the application on the cover sheet of the region report lists each of the geographies that you've included in that region you built. So for example, um, here on the slide you can see I had built a region called Charlotte Area that contains data for the city of Charlotte, but also a couple of the towns that are around the city of Charlotte, Weddington, Matthews, Pineville, and Mid-Hill. Right now, from that cover page, there's no way to look at not only the data just for, uh, for the entire Charlotte area, that five-city that five city area, but for each of the individual cities and towns that make up that region, we are adding that ability as well. Kind of looking forward to what's happening in the future of Census Business Builder, we are going to be updating um, in this August release and again in December the vintage of all the data sources. You might have just noticed that the quarterly workforce indicators data that's in CBB right now is from 2016. That was just due to the timing of when the data were available. In August, we're going to be updating that to first through, for, through fourth quarter 2017. And in December, we're going to be updating it to first through fourth quarter 2018. We are also, in December, going to be updating the vintage of NAICS and geography that are currently available in Census Business Builder. Right now, all of our business data and demographic data are shown using 2012 vintage geographies, baselined and benchmarked back to the 2012 economic census. Because we are going to be starting to release data from the 2017 economic census in September, we will now be updating NAICS and geography to a 2017 um, vintage basis. Finally, we are working on addressing some of these API challenges, those error-fetching data messages that you saw coming up in CBB. That's being addressed both within the CBB code and in our API itself. So for those of you who are already consuming our API and are already yourself seeing some of those slowdowns or those uh, delays in getting the, your data back, they are working on a number of hardware and software solutions to this API challenge. 
Finally, um, moving, looking forward beyond um, this year, we are going to be expanding both the data and the functionality available in CBB. Again, this is all based upon comments that we've received from users. You might have noticed that we have trade data in Census Business Builder. The data are not available right now uh, by country of origination and destination. Because we're adding that third dimension, we are going to be adding the ability to view the trade data by country. Um, similarly, we're going to be including the newly released 2017 economic census data. And from a functional standpoint, we're adding a number of interesting features, including a drill down to be able to look at the full NAICS hierarchy in the Regional Analyst Edition, and additional features like creating your own variables, being able to look at multiple variables on the map, and finally, improving the way that users can get to geographies and data variables. Right now, you only you have to know the name of the, the title of the geography or the, or the variable that you're interested in. We are going to be adding a search feature. So with that, I want to say thank you to all of you for participating. Um, I'm going to let Erlene go ahead and open this up for questions. So, Erlene, are you, uh, you ready to, uh, to kind of close this out for today? Um, no. So, Shanita will be um, actually doing the question part, um, and then I will close after that. Okay, great. So, Shanita, are you, uh, can you see if anybody's interested in asking any questions? Yes. We will now begin the question and answer session. If you would like to ask a question, please press star 1. You will be prompted to record your name. To withdraw your question, you may press star 2. Again, press star 1 to ask a question. And our first question, we did not get a name, but your line is open. You may ask your question. Yes, um, I was trying to find out. You covered the geography issues, but is there any way I can get copies of your PowerPoint slides as they reference specifically to geography? Yes. So I guess I should have said at the very beginning, but today's webinar is going to be, uh, has been recorded. Um, we will be posting the recording as well as the transcript and the PowerPoint file um, to our website, and you'll be receiving more information about where that recording is going to be posted later. I will also mention, since you talked about uh, some of the things I, re I referenced or referred to in this webinar, we do have some other webinars that are available, um, including a full description of all of the changes that are coming for the 2017 Economic Census. We have a lot of really great reference materials that highlight what are all those geographic changes, what are all those NAICS changes, and what are the other types of changes that you're going to be seeing in the 2017 Economic Census. Um, you have my email address here um, on the slide as well as my direct phone number. Please drop me an email and I'll be happy to send you a link to where that recording is for the webinar about the 2017 Economic Census as well as links to those other reference materials that are available on our website about those geographic changes. Thank you. You're welcome. Again, press star 1 if you would like to ask a question. Our next question comes from Samuel Nixon. Samuel, your line is open. You may ask your question. Yes, uh, Andrew, thank you very much for the overview of the, change, of the uh, updates and changes there. Well, the question I have is if I'm looking at uh, data from small businesses in different geographic areas, how much uh, flexibility is there? Uh, in looking at the uh, variations that, you, as you were demonstrating, in terms of the uh, the uh, wages and uh, salaries and by by categories, is that available? If I just want to look at the, the strata of businesses, say below, uh, uh, I'll just say below a million dollars or below half a million dollars. Can I do that with some of the data that you're sharing there in terms of number of employees as well as uh, uh, salary and, uh, and wages kinds of things, and, and also benefits. Is there a way of getting at that data by geographic breakout uh, in the similar fashion that you were showing by the uh, category of employment? 
Yeah, that's a, that's a great question, um, and, it, and your question is exactly why we are adding that third dimension uh, functionality to the, um, in the August release. Currently, in, the, in version 2.5 that is available right now, the number of businesses, the employment, the payroll, the revenues, and the other variables that are available about businesses are only available for all businesses. They are not available in the tool right now by business size, but Census does have that data broken out by business size. So currently, in Census Business Builder, in the report, we have provided deep links to get from the report to the more detailed tables. So users really have liked those more those detailed deep links into American Fact Finder, but it still requires you to go to one other place to get that more detailed data. So that's exactly why we're adding the employment size and the revenue size data available um, that we do have available that is just not currently available in Census Business Builder trying to strike that happy balance of easy to use and yet still useful has been a challenge in this tool. We don't want to put too much data in it because then it becomes difficult to use, but we also want to make sure we have enough data in it that's useful to you. So that's why we are adding that ability. So I guess the short answer right now, no, we don't have the size type data, the small business size data, specifically broken out, but in the August release, we will have that data. So that's a great question. That's exactly why we added that functionality. Okay, I appreciate that. Thank you for your your uh, update to it so we can get to that data. Super. Our next question comes from Leslie Gard. Leslie, your line is open. You may ask your question. Um, okay, yes, hi. Okay. Now, I was really doing a pre, the, um, like I said, pre overview. We do that, and I was wondering, as to be a being a, being a part, how 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 what? How can I say this? I got the fingerprints. I'm just waiting to get the information in the computers and to be a part and to really understand these programs. And uh, what is the time period that I can hear from a agent or representative? So I'm not sure I understood your question. Can you maybe ask it again? I, I didn't quite understand what you're asking. Okay, all right. Now, I've been, okay, it's been applied since for May, and I just recently did my fingerprints and so I can get more understanding and reach um, reaching out from representatives, and I'm just, like, waiting so I can get started and go to the office. And, you know, I started with the enumerator in back in 2000, and it's now to be a field employee and to gather up the statistics and the stats to be more of an a asset to the company, I'm just waiting on the response time. Like, what would be the response time to contact me as a new hire? Right. So, um, obviously, your question is more about sort of the process of becoming a census employee and, and those kind of things. Um, for the purposes of today's webinar, why don't we hold off on answering that? I'll answer that directly. Um, so you have my email address here on the slide and my phone number. I'd be happy to talk with you in person or just over the phone um, about that process. Um, again, that's not really directly related to Census Business Builder, but I, I'd be happy to talk to you about it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I just want to be able to just to really understand and really master this um, the census business builder. You know, to be positive, productive asset to the company and to everybody around. Absolutely. Yeah, the tool. I mean, the data tool is available for free, and there's nothing that you know, there's no registration or anything you need to do to use this data tool. It's available right on the main Census Bureau's homepage, um, off of that um, data data apps and. Um, out of that data apps menu. So yeah, there's there's nothing you need to do to get access to the tool, but if you're looking for employment opportunities and things like that at Census, I'd be happy to chat with you. Okay, okay, because I'm like three like three steps ahead. Like yeah, I've been Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, and we did Frank and the guy other guy, uh, Ricardo. Okay. All right. So um after this webinar I can just get on the scene and really refresh my memory and master it get a little bit more mastery of understanding the program. Yep, that'd be great. 
All right. Sounds good. Absolutely. Thank you again, <laughs> Mr. Card. And are you going to get some emails from me? You know, I have a lot of questions. Like, I don't want to bombard with questions, but yes, sir. Absolutely. Thank you. Appreciate Sounds it. Sounds great. Thank you. Yes, sir. Again, star one if you have a question. Our next question comes from April Palmer. April, your line is open. You may ask your question. Hi, Andrew. Thank you so much for the terrific presentation. Um, I'm actually calling, the reason I'm asking this question is the dashboard when hovering over one of the areas, um, I noticed that you could compare, you were pointing out you could compare the area you're looking at, for example, it was the county to the state. And I'm curious if there are future uh, changes or anything that will allow us to compare other areas. So for example, if a business wanted to expand um, somewhere within a region and they wanted to compare zip codes to find out where the best location might be for them to expand, or will there be an option to choose your region to compare side by side? Sure. So yeah, that's a, that's a great question. So right now, um, the in the map itself, a user could always compare one geography that's that's uh, displayed on the map to another geography that's also displayed on that map simply by clicking on those neighboring geographies. So for example, in my demo, I was specifically interested in data for Anne Arundel County, Maryland, but I can click on the neighboring counties of Prince George's and Howard and Calvert counties and the other counties to compare that data on the map. The dashboard, well, let me, let me finish. So you have that ability on the map to compare the data. You are limited in some respects on the map in how large an area you can view. In order to maintain performance of Census Business Builder, we limit the number of geographies you can view on the map at any one time to 1,000 geographies. So if we zoom the map out, we would be able to see not only the counties in Maryland, but we could see the counties in Virginia and in Pennsylvania and Delaware and sort of some of the neighboring um, states. But if we kept zooming out and tried to view the entire nation, the map would actually disappear. You have to, in order to view the entire nation, you'd have to look at state level data. We are actually working on improving that functionality to allow you to view every county in the United States on the map. Right now, it's limited. Now, in the dashboard itself, we did provide some of that sort of um, simple comparisons. So when you are looking at the data for a county, it allows you to compare the county to the nation, or excuse me, to the state and then the nation. If you're looking at a zip code, it allows you to compare the zip code to the city, the county, the state, and the nation. So we have built some of those functionality in, but it's still, that comparison chart is comparing the geography you've selected to its parents, if you will, not to another geography. We have had some users that have said, wow, I would really like to be able to compare Orange County, Florida to Orange County, California, and be able to see those numbers side by side. Right now in the tool, you can't do that functionality. What you would have to do is you would have to pull up the data for Orange County, Florida, download that data, then pull up the data for Orange County, Florida, and download that data, and then in Excel do that side-by-side -side comparison. But yeah, that's a great uh, that's a great suggestion um, on building that comparison right into the dashboard, letting you essentially customize the dashboard. So yeah, thank you for suggesting that. We'll uh, we'll look into adding that feature. Absolutely. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Our next question comes from Wendy Coswell, and if there are any other questions, please press star 1. Wendy, your line is open. You may ask your question. Thank you. A quick question. Are you affected by the migration to data.census.gov? So in short, yes, um, and I'll say mostly positively Im impacted. So. As, as you probably already know, data.census.gov is being built on top of our Census API in a similar way as Census Business Builder is built on top of the API. 
So as more and more data is being added into data.census.gov, into this new Census Bureau platform that will replace American Fact Finder, as more and more data is being added into that platform, they're adding it into the API, which then is then expanding the possibilities of data that we can now add into Census Business Builder. I'll give you an example. Currently, the building permits data that we published the Census Bureau is not available in our Census Bureau's API. It has not been loaded to the API. We had so many requests from data users to add the building permits data to Census Business Builder that we decided to actually host the building permits data on our own, on our own cloud server where Census Business Builder is hosting. So that way Census Business Builder could pull in that building permits data as if it was pulling it from the Census API, but it's actually pulling it in from this third party, um, Amazon Web Services API. Once they've now added the building permits data to the Census Bureau's API so it can be accessible in data.census.gov, then we'll now be able to start pulling the data from there and not having to pull it from uh, the Amazon Web Services cloud. Um, I will say uh, one slightly negative uh, impact is those error messages that I mentioned, those error fetching data messages that were coming up in Census Business Builder, those never were coming up until we started rolling out the data um, and started releasing data.census.gov. There are, there are now so many people, census staff as well as outside the Census Bureau that are now utilizing that API that now some of us are being impacted, are having some performance impacts, and that's why I was saying we're working on improving the performance of the API because we know those same error messages that I was getting in Census Business Builder, users of data.census.gov will similarly be impacted by those performance issues. So the, this whole move to data.census.gov is making it easier, is really sort of putting the pressure on and making it easier not only for us to pull data down dynamically with our data tools, but even data users like you. So if you wanted to create your own data tool, or your own dashboard or your, or your own portal and you wanted to pull data down using our API, you could now do that. You'd be seeing some of the same performance challenges as we're starting to see. So yeah, for the most part, this move has been very positive for Census Business Builder. But we will continue to access you through census.gov. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Our next question comes from Ophelia Seals. Ophelia, your line is open. You may ask your question. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, my question was, I think the lady just asked the same question, so I'm just going to elaborate on it a little bit. Uh, my question was, um, using the information, the software that you just mentioned, I was following along with it online as you were speaking. Um, that software is good to help us build our own personal profile for our own business, uh, small business business as well as corporate business. I hope it will be useful in uh, doing our own personal um, random search on how to build uh, status and the uh, center in different locations. And we have, we're out of uh, Los Angeles at this moment, and it's growing so rapidly. And uh, we're dealing with diversify of uh, clientele as well. So uh, that's my question. Will it be able to help me on the uh, center on um, the diversity of different groups of uh, people as well as organizations? That's my question. Yeah. So I'm really happy to hear that you see value in kind of what we've done. Um, this tool was originally designed specifically for small business development centers. Um, SBDCs are an amazing, invaluable resource that help entrepreneurs and small business owners in their local communities get their, build, their businesses off the ground and making sure that they're, they're, they're being successful. Uh, we recognized that building a tool like Census Business Builder and exposing this great census data to these, to these people is really what we want to do. But the ability for us to get the message out to every single small business owner in the U.S. is probably almost impossible. 
So instead, we've been working with chambers of commerce and small business development centers and other sort of regional and local groups to, to educate them about these data and these resources so that they can work with their, with their clients. A lot of the comments that we got into, into building Census Business Builder, including the comments to add the quarterly workforce indicators data, came specifically from entrepreneurs and from small business development center counselors who are saying, you know, Andy, I really like this annual data that you have in the tool, but I need something that's quarterly, and I may, may even now need some monthly data, something that's more timely than the data that you all have from Census. So that's why we added the quarterly workforce data. That's why in August we're adding the BLS quarterly census of employment and wages, the quarterly and monthly data that they publish every month. Um, so we're trying to make these, this information accessible to users who really could stand to use this information to make sure that they're making a smart decision about their business. So yeah, I'm really, I'm really happy to hear that. Um, just to let you know, um, and for those of you on the webinar, we do webinars like this all the time on this data tool. So if you're interested in hosting or having me present at a webinar or a workshop with your local group, um, please let me know. You all have my email address and phone number here on the slide. So great question. Thank you. Well, thank you, Andy. Our next question comes from Tara Alexander. Tara, your line is open. You may ask your question. Hello. Thank you very much for having these webinars. Um, two questions about the categories. Um, I haven't downloaded or looked at it as carefully, but as I hope to. How is, what is the status and data for farms and farm employees? Right. And this yeah. second question, well, I'll ask that one and then the, the second category after. Okay. So on the farms data, um, as you probably know, um, the Census Bureau publishes very little data on agriculture because the U.S. Department of Agriculture does. In fact, when, for the first year and a half of Census Business Builder's life, there were no farms data available at all in Census Business Builder. We had so many comments from users in rural parts of the United States where agriculture is a major portion of their economy that we went ahead and added some agriculture data from USDA, National Agricultural Statistics Service, to Census Business Builder. So for example, if instead of choosing trucking companies as my industry that I, that I did in the demo, if I had chosen poultry farms, I would actually be able to look at data on employment, on wages, on revenues, of, of poultry farms um, in the United States. The data that we have available from USDA is really pretty limited. Um, for the most part, it's at the national and state level. We do have some county level information available, mostly for agricultural support businesses, not, not as much for the farms themselves. Um, but that was also one of the reasons why we started thinking about adding the BLS data and the quarterly census of employment and wages data, the QWI data, because those programs do have some information on agriculture. So we're trying to make this tool useful to a wide variety of users. So yeah, we've started to add the farms data. Um, we have information on farm loan programs and things like that, revenues, farm revenue versus non-farm revenue. Those numbers are available in the tool. Oh, thank you. And the second question is how would we track or get data on, say, um, I don't know how to explain it exactly without giving being uh, specific on if a large company comes in and does does contractors does construction work and they have a lot of employers employee I'm sorry I'm trying to think of it the same <laughs> time they have a lot of employees that are not in say you use Maryland um, county and the they're not residents they come in for six months they're there for six months and then they leave. 
and there's a lot of them, and they're in a lot of different fields. Is there any way to track that kind of work, construction workers, engineers, um, administrators that come in and they set up a temporary office for, for six months and the migratory workers because um, so that's really three questions. So right, right, farm, right. farm, large c corporations that come in for six months, do a lot of construction, and then leave. Right. Okay. And so then the last me... one is how do we can we track you know migratory workers? Right. Migratory right. Workers and stuff. Okay. Well, so let me let me kind of dissect that those those questions in a couple of pieces. So first, for the employment data that we publish in our annual programs at the Census Bureau, those employment numbers include employees of that business regardless of whether they were there for all 12 months during the year or for any portion of the year. What, what's key is we publish data on employment based upon whether or not that worker is a true employee of that business. So if you are a, um, if we're talking about a chemical manufacturing business, let's say a petrochemical plant, and they hire a certain number of workers for a portion of the year, they come in, they do construction work at that petrochemical plant, and they then leave our employment data for that business would include those workers because they are employees of that, of that business. Now, the other side of that is what happens when those workers are not employees of that business. They are independent contractors. They are brought in on a contract basis to do that work. Um, in, in most of our data programs, um, and I'm going to speak, speak specifically about construction data, we publish information that looks at not only where is that construction firm headquartered, but right. what is the geography that they are working in. Because that construction company could be headquartered in Texas, but they're a petrochemical, they're working on oil and gas field workers, uh, on oil and gas field equipment, and they're maybe up in, up in North Dakota. Doing, doing work. So in our construction data, we do publish information that breaks out their revenues and their work based upon where they're actually working, not where they are physically headquartered. That type of detailed data wouldn't be available in Census Business Builder, but it is available from some of our other resources. So again, I would, I would encourage you to, to send me an email um, or give me a call, and we can talk about some of those other sources. Um, it's especially challenging when those workers are truly completely independent contractors because they are not employees of anybody. Those Are those non-employer businesses, those self-employed truck drivers that I was talking about, that same self-employment situation also applies in a lot of other industries. And tracking where that work is actually being done as opposed to where that person is is normally based out of is a is it a special challenge for us that that also applies in some respects to the migrant worker um, question that you asked again if those migrant workers are employees of that business of that farm of that that processing plant um, if they are truly employees of that business, then even though they're migratory, we still count them when for the time that they spend and the money that they, you know, that they earn when they're working for that business um, during, the, during the year. So, um, but then the question is, is what happens if they're not employees, if they're totally independent contractors? So, yeah, it, it's, a, it's a challenging um, situation that you're describing of how to measure work that is happening in a different place than where the business is normally headquartered. Aha. Thank you. You're welcome. <clears throat> Our next question comes from April Potter. April, your line is open. You may ask your question. Hi, Andrew. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> Quick question. So in regards to you stating that 
you work with different small business development centers. We actually, um, I'm part of an economic development organization and we co-host them here. And they actually do what are called lunch and learns, which are one hour um, quick topics for, for small business owners to come to and learn some information that's valuable. Um, there is a small fee of $40 only to cover the lunch and things like that. Mm -hmm. And I'm just curious, is this something that maybe we could replicate at a level to teach the small business owners um, from our end? Like, for example, if I, I did the lunch and learn for them and was not making a profit off it, but were able to share the census business builder with them. Absolutely. So a lot of the training that I do is with people who are then going to do other training themselves. You know, it's sort of a train the trainer kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. um, I did a workshop just last week for a group in northern New Jersey that was then going to be hosting their own workshop. And basically, I taught them how to use our data tools and how to use some of our, uh, learn about our programs. And they then did that. Um, one thing I will mention to you uh, that m you may be interested in is in addition to me here, here, here at headquarters and doing the webinars and workshops that I do, we have a network of, of folks called data dissemination specialists or DDSs. Um, these are staff people that are that work in the United States scattered across the whole U.S. There is one, at least one DDS that covers every single state in America. Um, some DDSs actually cover multiple states. So depending upon where you're physically located, um, we could actually, I could put you in touch with the DDS that actually handles your area of the country, okay. and he or she could then possibly come there in person with you and do the training with you, or like me, they could train you and you could then do the training. So we try to make these workshops as personal as possible and the DDSs do a fabulous job. I, I love the, those folks. They really are a great sort of boots on the ground resource that we rely on a lot because there's no way I can travel the whole country as much as I might try. Um, my, my voice is a little a little hoarse because I've been on travel for the last three three weeks straight, um, but the uh, but they are a great resource. So yeah, um, again, you have my email address and phone number. Uh, drop me an email and I'll put you in touch with the DDS that actually is responsible for your area. They are a great resource. Thank you so much. You're welcome. At this time, I do not show any questions. <laughs> Thank you okay. so much. I would like to thank Andy for this, his excellent presentation, and thank you to our audience for joining us today. Join us next month when Kristen McHugh of the U.S. Census Bureau presents Hires and Separations in Equilibrium. As a reminder, participants will receive an evaluation survey when they log off from the webinar or an email with a survey link. We appreciate your feedback and how we can better serve you. Thank you so much, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. That concludes today's conference. Thank you all for participating. You may now disconnect.